ฉะนั้นเริ่มที่คู่แรกเลยดีกว่านะฮะน้ำหนักนะฮะพบกันที่พิกัดน้ำหนัก64กิโลกร,รัมคนแรกมาจากอิหร่านครับมาโดยชั้นเชิญขอเสียงต้อนรับจอมแท็กติกบาร์แบ็กฮอกี้จากอิหร่านพันเชือกมาที่แขนเห็นไหมคุณเหมือนแบบตั้งแต่สมัยแบบนายขนมต้มแบบนี้ใช่ใช่แป๊บเดียวมีสิทธิ์น็อกเพราะไม่ได้สวนนวมนุ่มๆนะฮะฉะนั้นเนี่ยอันตรายมากทุกซิววินาทีครับแล้วหน่วยกล้ามดูสิคุณเป๊กผมว่าน่ากลัวเลยทีเดียวนะโอ้โหดูบอกแล้วนะเขาซุ่มซ้อมนะฮะความนักมวยไทยมานักต่อนักแล้วคุณโอ้ยคนนี้ไม่ธรรมดาผมบอกเลยว่าคนที่ผมจะแนะนําต่อไปเขาไม่กลัวครับผมอามาดิครับจะไปกลัวทําไมล่ะครับแล้วผู้ที่จะขึ้นมาประทัดด้วยนี้นะครับนี่คือครั้งแรกบนสังเวียนไทยไฟครับผมขอเสียงต้อนรับนะครับจอมบูเมืองพญาแลแรมโบเล็กต่อโยชาเราจะมองดูภาพแรกของผู้ใหญ่ในวันนี้บาบิกฮากี28ปีชาวอิหร่านไทย170ซนติเมตรท้อง64กิโลกรัมของน้ำหนักและชนะ34ชนะ25ชนะ6ชนะและ3ชนะอย่างที่คุณสามารถเห็นเขาคือผู้แข่งที่ชนะวันนี้แรมโบเล็กทอโยต้า18 year old, originally from Chaya Pum province here in Thailand, 173 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 127 fights, 89 victories, 37 losses, and one draw. It's always nice to see new blood here at Thai Fight. Rambo Lek currently on a four-fight win streak in the uh, stadiums, and he's been uh, he's been asked to fight here at Thai Fight. Very excited to see what this young lad can do. Yeah, big opportunity for a young fighter. Really is. 
here at Omnoy Stadium right now. Actually, me and, um, and Adam, we're not actually ringside. We're in a corridor outside due to uh, COVID restrictions. DMHTT. Yeah, do you want to go through that for the fans? Yeah, sure. So this is known as TIE Fight DMHTT, which stands for D for distancing, M for mask wearing, H for hand washing, T for testing, and T for Thai Chana. Thai Chana is an app that all Thai people have to use to check into malls and other places. Love it. Big <laughs> fan. So that is why we are calling this D, Thai Fight DMHTT. Just rolls off the tongue. Doesn't it? Aaron. Otherwise known as Thai Fight. Um, <laughs> so we're here at Omnoy Stadium with no fans in attendance. I'm and a no fan. Sanchai as well, who um, is sadly recovering from COVID. So get well soon, Sanchai. First fight of the evening, Rambo Lek Toyota in the black corner from Thailand. And in the white corner from Iran, Babak Hagi. See the ropes wrapping their hands. This is a card chuck bout. Most of the bouts tonight will be card chuck. That's correct. Eight of the nine scheduled fights here tonight. Card chuck. Very, very unique to Thai fights. Well, One of the reasons we see so many knockouts here. Yeah, I love it. So impressed with what they've done with Omnoy. People who know Omnoy Stadium know that it's a very small stadium. Usually fights take place on a Saturday. It doesn't usually look like a KISS concert. Yeah, well, this <laughs> is like... Uh, is what we've made up for fans, we've just put lights in there. It looks fantastic. It's TIE Fight Instagram, really. It's about, it's about getting <laughs> like that right that. angle. Yeah. Oh, great job to the team at TIE Fight. Rambo let test in the waters there. Going in with a high, right high kick. Blocked by Haji. Or nice Hagi. low kick. Yeah, nice low kick there from Hagi. Good left kick to the body that time. Nice shot of Haggy Scorpion on the back there. Hopefully he can sting a few punches in. Right kick, right hand there from the tie. Inside kick there from Haggy. Always have a lot of Iranians here on tie fight. Nice straight right hand there from Brambolek. Well, as you mentioned, Aaron, no Sanchai tonight. Sanchai, of course, always headlining these cards, recovering from COVID as we speak. Yeah, only, so got, only got diagnosed about two, two or three days ago, I believe. Yeah, well, all these fighters go through rigorous testing before these, before these fights happen in order to follow all these COVID regulations. We've talked about it, Aaron. TIE fight right now is like Rocky Balboa. They just refuse to, <laughs> to stay down. I mean, they're, they're scrambling to... Oh. Left high kick there, momentarily rocks Haji, he's in trouble though, yeah, and a right hand, and he's down. He was really off balance after that high kick, and I think yeah. Rambo Lex sensed it, went in for the finish. Yeah, spiral alert, but shades of full grows from earlier today. Toyota now going in for the finish. Look at Rambo let go. Another S Sylvester Stallone reference there. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> I'm, all, I'm here for it. Yeah, Haggy's still out on his feet. Looks yeah, to have seems recovered. Like he's in a lot of trouble. Well, I think he seems to have recovered a little bit, but I still think he's there for the to take out. Yeah, oh, down, down again. He goes again. Yeah. He's really struggling. He really is. I think the ref's gonna call it off here. Looks like he's lost his equilibrium, to be honest. The eyes are oh yeah. yeah good I've call seen by ice the skaters ref. with better balance. Yes. <laughs> good start there from the debutant Rambo Lek Toyota here at Tie Fight. First bout of nine schedule bouts here tonight from Omnoy Stadium. Oh, look at that, Adam. He's still on wobbly feet. Just shows what a good decision the referee made. Initially with that right hand, and then that left high kick just snuck around the guard. Yeah, everything's hitting him behind the ear, which is that spot where yeah. you can see the punch hit him behind the ear, the kick hit him behind the ear, and that's where you lose your equilibrium. Trust me, I've watched a lot of YouTube videos, Aaron. <laughs> yeah, you can see that right hand right in the back of the ear. Down goes Rambo. And hopefully we'll see Rambo Lek here again. Yeah, really good debut for Let's the young fighter. Let's take fighter. it over to the MCs. Mm. 
และผู้ชนะของเรานะครับได้แก่ลัมโบเล็กปรบไทยแลนด์ Confirmation of your winner of the first bout from Thailand, Rambo Lek Toyota. คนแรกเป็นยอดมวยจากอาเชนดีนานะไม่ได้มาเล่นๆครับผมคนนี้เนี่ยยืนซัดแลกหมัดกันมาแล้วหลายคนคว่ำนักมวยไทยหลายคนไม่ต้องเหมือนกันไม่ธรรมดาคนนี้ไม่ธรรมดาขอเสียงต้อนรับจอมตะบันแดนฟ้าขาวลูก้าลอสเลเหมือนใครมาราโดนาใช่นี่ผมกำลังคิดอยู่เลยนะแข้งขานต้องสับๆแบบนักบอลมวยนี่มือได้เข่าชื่ออะไรมาราโดนาคือ hand of god ถูกอันนั้นหมัดเขาระดับกอดหนักแน่นอนคนนี้คือต้องบอกเลยฮะว่าไม่ได้มีแค่มาราโดนานะประเทศอาร์เจนตินานักมวยเขาก็มีเก่งๆเยอะเหมือนกันธรรมดาก็ดูหุ่นขนาดนี้นะหมัดจะหนักขนาดไหนเดี๋ยวค่อยดูผมว่าคุณลองลองลองไปไปลุยๆสักทีลุยๆอย่าไปกลัวแป๊กเราไม่ต้องถึงมือผมคุณมาครั้งแรกเปิดสิ่งเดียวเอาคุณก่อนเลยเดี๋ยวยังไม่กล้าแล้วผมจะไปกล้าได้ยังไงเอาเอางี้ดีกว่าคนที่จะมาเจอคนที่มาเจอเขาไม่ใช่พวกเราไม่ใช่พวกเราต้องเจอคนนี้เลยครับคนที่มาขึ้นดวนหมัดด้วยนั้นนะครับเป็นยอดมวยจากเมืองโคราชครับคุณผู้ชมครับออขอเสียงต้อนรับเลยดีกว่าพี่แป๊กครับขุนศึกเมืองแย่โมราชสิงห์โรงเรียนกีฬาโคราชราชสิงห์โรงเรียนกีฬาโคราชขุนศึกเมืองย่าโมประเทศไทยThere is the second challenger this evening, Luca Lasali, 27-year-old fighter from Argentina, 169 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 68 kilograms. He has a professional record of 51 fights, 35 wins, 11 losses, and five draws. 
Of course, he was scheduled originally to fight Senchai in the headline bout, but as Senchai had to pull out because of COVID testing, he is now taking on Racha Singh. Pretty much the same, isn't it? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and he'll, yes, like Adam said, he'll be taking on the recalled Racha Singh Rongrien Kila Korat. Last time out here at Thai Fight, he fought in the Isuzu Cup Super Fight against Gonkai, in which he got knocked out. However, it was a very good fight. He is 23 years of age, 96 fights, 71 victories with 23 losses and two draws. Yeah, we mentioned the big change for, for Luca, of course, thinking he was going to be fighting Sen Chai and now fighting Racha Singh instead, but an even bigger change from Racha Singh, who was not on the card. Yeah. And now is. Yeah, and with only three days' notice. Yep. The question is, is he in true fighting shape? We know Lasale is because he was fighting Sanchai, so. Something to keep your eye on as this fight takes place. Just joined us, folks. We're at Omnoy Stadium. Racha Singh, Rong Rieng, Kira Korat in the Black corner from Thailand. And then the white, the challenger, Luca Lasale from Argentina. Again, nine scheduled fights here tonight. Eight of which are Ka Chuck, the rope hands. Let's see what Racha Singh has got. He's fighting actually at a heavier weight. Well, that's, that makes sense. He didn't have time to weight cut. Did he have time to train? We'll see. We know Luca Lasalle is. How's the mentality though? You're going into a fight where you believe you're fighting Sancho in the main event, and now you're second on the card against Racha Singh. We'll see how this has affected him, if at all. Round one. Right kick, push kick, fired off from Racha Singh to start this fight. You've got to think, aren't you? If you're Racha Singh, you want to get this done quick and early because you might not be as fit as you would be in the later rounds due to the lack of training. It looks in decent shape. Looking for that right hand. And again with that right hand, trying to break through that guard of Lasale. Does that time. A couple of right hands, attempted elbow there from the tie. Oh, almost. Lasale just ducks out of the way. Another right Another hand right there hand, from Racha yeah. Singh. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. He keeps firing that straight right, finding a home for it. Oh, and again. there it is again. Perfect timing, Adam. You can already see the marking on the face of Asali. He's taking a pounding here early in round one. It doesn't take much with those roped hands. Not at all. And like we've talked about before, you can't guard! Straight right hand, and Lasale is down. Hard to wipe a punch off your face. <laughs> Looks like there's blood coming from the eye. Difficult to see. Roger Again, Singh if you just joined us, in here me and Adam are not actually ringside. But yeah, that eye. Oh, right on that eye, Adam. Again, yeah, Lasale is in a world right. of hurt. Yeah. Oh, oh my, my goodness. goodness. Jinx. You got me. I was going to say, he's just going to dig that grave with that right, straight right hand, but he came with that high right kick and flatten Lasali. I don't even know how Lasali is up right now. Yeah, the ref's going to have to take a look at this. Yeah, that's it, that's it. He's just taking a beat and he's been barred from pillar to post. And that's all she wrote. Unbelievable performance on three days notice for your winner right there, Racha Singh. Rong Ri Ki Korat. He's Rong Ri and Ki Korat. All right. Yeah, Rong Ri and Ki Korat. What a performance. Called up, recalled back to fight on short notice and just marched through his opponent. Looked fantastic. And there you can see that right hit kick wrapped around the head of Luca Lasale and just buried him in the ground. And at that point, he was already one foot in the grave. He'd been bleeding from the straight right hands. And while he did get back up to his feet, which I was really impressed with, it wasn't for long. Straight left. There, and that was it. Swift, effective performance there from Racha Singh. Giving the TIE Fight team something to think about, eh? 
Will they bring him back for even more fights now? He wasn't scheduled to be here, remember, folks. He crashed the party. Let's get confirmations of the victory from our MCs. อันว่าบรุนแรงขนาดไหนไม่เคยมาดูลิมขอบเวทีขนาดนี้ต้องบอกได้จริงๆนักหน้าคุณผู้ชมนกยกแรกอีกแล้วนะฮะครับผมเอ
It's a really cool Moncon, isn't it? I was it? just about to say, it's very <laughs> Tom Paul, <Poe>, right? <laughs> very cool, very cool. There is the Black Bull, Nicholas Mendez, 28-year-old fighter, born in Senegal, fighting out of Spain, 190 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 77 kgs. His record, 51 fights, 36 wins, 14 losses, one draw. Maybe no bigger win than his last time out here at Thai Fight Nan, where he knocked out Sensatarm with a Un flying knee. Unquestionably, that was the biggest win of his career, without a doubt. It's really put him into the spotlight. And he'll be taking on that man right there, the returning. Kompikat, more Rathana Bandits, or Kawan Wung. 24-year-old, originally from Prayer Province here in Thailand, 180 centimeters tall, meaning he gives away 10 centimeters here tonight. 74 fights with 62 victories, 10 losses and two draws. He is the current Lumpini Boxing Stadium champion at super middleweight and ranked by the World Muay Thai Organization, the WMO, as number one in the world. Nicholas Mendes. It's ranked number eight. So you had mentioned to the, me to this, uh, you had mentioned this to me <laughs> off the air that this was your potential for fight of the night Looking on this down card. The list, not just the list of the fights, the Thai fight stars, but of the combatants. You have to say this is the most evenly matched fight we've had in a long time here at Thai Fight on paper. On paper, of course. Yeah, I mean he fought well against Teng Nung. He, he did lose Nicholas Mendes against Teng Nung, but. To see what he did against Sensatan was so Spectacular. impressive. Absolutely. So we're going to see if he can ride that momentum into a potential fight of the night here. Our third bout of the night. Karchuk again. You can see the roped hands. Kompikart, more Ratana Bandit, saw Tawanrong in the black corner representing Thailand. And representing Spain via Senegal. In the white corner, the black bull, Nicolas Mendez. Well, it's another interesting wrinkle as well, Aaron. We haven't really seen any fighter give a problem to Kompakart. No, we've He's kind of just bulldozed through everybody. So that's another thing to look at, just the potential that Mendez might, you know, offer a bit more of a challenge to Kompakart than he's seen here at Thai fights so far. That's one of the issues for a bigger fight here in Thailand mm. is you don't get to fight that often. Yeah, you mentioned that, that he was the champion at Lumpini at his weight class, Now I was just thinking, well, yeah, <laughs> it's I either him or the other three I think guys. It, was against, <laughs> it would have been against a foreigner, I believe. And I think it was a few years ago. The last time Kompikart fought was at Thai Fight last year. He doesn't get that many fights because of his weight. However, Nicholas Mendes fought last time at Thai Fight at Nan. So who's more prepared? More who's, more who's more ring yeah. ready? It's probably Nicholas Mendes. And I've got to say, he looks in phenomenal shape. Low kick already looks like it's causing a problem there from Kompikart. To be fair to Kompikart, though, he's never been the one who's really had the kind of physique that you would rave about. I feel he's like he's more, just caught, he's I just think he just caught Nicol Oh, oh my elbow. God! Out of nowhere! I was just about to say, I thought Kompikart caught him with a couple of stepping left elbows there. Mendez is there, he's blocking, but he's also throwing elbows at the same time. Yeah, there's some really interesting exchanges happening inside the Left inside the shot. pocket here, Aaron. Outside kick there from Mendez. And it looks like Kumpakar's bleeding. Yeah, I'm no surprise. Unbelievable technique there from Mendez. Tactically, it makes sense what Kumpakar's doing. He's trying to negate that range, those long legs of Mendez. He's trying to get in close, but he might have second thoughts about that now because every time he's close that gap. Mendez is get, giving him some stuff to think about. Without a doubt. Yeah, you can see the look on Kompikar's face. He's wary now of, of what Mendez possesses. Doesn't look that comfortable. Well, we did say we thought it would be an even fight, but wow, what a start. Nice you right kick to the body there from Mendez. Yeah, it's interesting here as well from Mendez. Again, tactically, he's fine staying here on the outside. He's got the reach. Swinging left and a miss there from Mendez. But he's doing some real work with the elbows when oh. he gets in close, and he even got the knee up there. Yeah, don't ask Sensatan about the power of those knees. A lot of dexterity being shown by Mendez. Another inside kick there. And again, it's like Complicat's found a home. A target. 
Well, Kompokart needs something. He needs to get the respect back from Mendez. I very much doubt Kompokart has fought anyone as tall as Mendez in his career. You're not going to find a lot of 190 centimeter Thai no, Muay Thai fighters. Really interesting exchanges here. Mendez looks to, have, looks to have slowed just a little bit. Could block that time. Inside kick. Complicat has huge legs though. Good left hand. End of round one. Wow. Well, there you can see that beautiful spinning downward elbow landed right on the nose of Kompakart, busted his nose up a little bit. And that's where you can see the blood on his face now and the markings came from that beautiful strike. And honestly, that wasn't it. I give round one to Mendez for sure. Based on the knockdown alone, right? Based on the knockdown alone. I'm not sure if they counted it as a knockdown oh. because he did just get right back up to his feet, but... Kumpakart knows he's got to be much more aggressive here in round two. Good off. Oh, nice. I think he heard you, Adam. Beautiful left elbow there from Kumpakart. Well, I don't think he did hear me because of social distancing. <laughs> of course. Beautiful right hand from Mendes. Oh, oh there he goes again. Elbow. One more time and connects. What a lovely technique that is to watch. He's using all that height to be able to spin and bring it down on the head of Kompikart. It really is an excellent technique. Good knees there, another elbow from Kompikart. You almost feel like it's unique to Mendez. If you were a 170 centimeter fighter, you wouldn't be able to throw it that same way. Not unless you were looking for an elbow to the chest. More knees there. Good hands from Kompikart. Good knees there from both fighters. Yeah, I think Kompikart wants to make this fight ugly now. Yeah, Just Kompikart. lock him up in the clinch, tire him out. Is Dash, is Dash, well, what's wrong? Is there an issue? Mendez looks frustrated. He was, he was gesturing to the ref about something. I'm not sure what that was. Back in the clinch they go. Oh, Kompikart. Way off the back. Body shots. Stiff left hand there from Mendes. Right hand from Cotton Cart. Another right hand. The left hand. He looks like he's fading, Aaron. Yes. Body shots from Complicart that just sucked the wind. All the air has gone out the tank of Mendes. There, another one there you can see into the body. Something's not quite right. Oh, spinning back elbow of his own there, but he just walks into another elbow. Yeah, he almost has to get on his tippy toes to throw it the same way. <laughs> the hands are down from Mendes. Yeah, Mendes just, he doesn't look mentally prepared for round two. It's still body shots, I believe. He had some knees as well, don't forget. It's like somebody told him before this fight started it was a one round fight. Then he had to go up for round two and he was like, what? Yeah, look, Kompikart is breaking him down right now. Yeah, that's a tough, tough round for Mendez. But he gave him a little look at the end, huh? Yeah, didn't well, he? Yeah, he was saying maybe he did. There was that beautiful elbow from Mendez at the start of the second round, but after that, it's all Kompikar. There's a beautiful body shot there, and it was all clinch work and body shots, and he just he just grinded him out. He made it, he made it a brawl. He made it a messy fight, and Mendez looked like he broke a little bit mentally in that second round. I'm not sure what it was exactly, but he looked agitated. He's still he's still talking poke about in the it. Eye, he thinks there might have been a poke in the eye, but man, Aaron, as a fighter, you got to get over that. I mean, he's been he's been groaning about it oh, since the middle shot. of the second round, you know. And at this point, all the momentum is in Kompakart's favor. Looks like he's woke up a little bit this time. Yeah, I mean, I've got this this fight scored one round apiece, so 
could be all up to this third round. Mendez really wants it. He's going to have to go for it. Oh, another good right hand there. Backing up. Oh, good elbow there from Mendez. Much of the same of what Coppercart was trying to achieve in the second round. Push Mendez against the rope. Break that distance. Looking for that spinning back elbow for a third time. Good right hand there from Mendez as Compi can't move forward. Compi can't, he's tough. Yeah, I mean, his nose got busted in that first round. He's fighting through it. He made his first two fights at tie fight look relatively easily, but now we're really discovering just how tough Compi can't is. Inside kick there from the tie. Yeah, you learn a lot more about fighters when they're up against it, for sure. Oh, Mendez looking to go to the body. There's that grinding style from Kompakar we talked about. Just laying on him, just putting his weight on him, tiring him out. Outside kick from Mendez. You know, it's interesting, Aaron, because Kompakar... Oh, another solid right hand there from Kompakar. Kompakar's the one that's breathing, breathing hard and looks tired. But Mendez just doesn't really have the output that he needs. Yeah, same since the first round, like we said. He doesn't look, he doesn't look like he's breathing hard, though. He's he just doesn't look engaged. He's been trying to counter everything that Kompakar's been throwing at him instead of attacking himself. Another solid, three solid jabs there from Kompakar. This is with the right hand, but still attacking with body shots, leg kicks. Just impressive output from Kampakar. He's doing what it takes to win this fight. He is tougher than a truck stop stake, that boy. Outside kick there from Kampakar. Oh, nice dig to the body from Mendes. But again, doesn't follow up. It's one shot, they're moving back. And here comes Kampakar again, scoring with the judges. All work rate for the tie. End of the third and final round. We will go to the judges. What do you think, Adam? Well, it was a great fight. Mendez really had some, but he's still talking about the eye poke, man. He's gonna. I think he's gonna look back and realize that he really missed a great opportunity here. You think Kompikart won the Kompikart final two rounds? definitely wins two rounds. Wins rounds two and three. Wins this fight, in my opinion. Well, let's find out. Let's take it over to our MCs. โอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้โหโอ้
แล้วครับพี่เป๊กครับกระโดดมาแล้วเป็นงานสปริงคอร์เท้าสุดยอดไอ้สปริงไม่เท่าไหร่จังหวะกระโดดมากระเกงสั้นเกือบเห็นอะไรแวบแผ่านไปไม่เห็นคุณนิตาดีแล้วครับอะไรครับเขาใส่ผมเองเขาคือชิมที่คาเมาทำให้หลายๆคนที่เป็นคู่ต่อสู้เขาเนี่ยเมาขาเขาได้ขาเมาเลยครับเมาเมาไม่ใช่ขาเมาแขนเพราะว่าเฮ้ยขาเขาหนักเหมือนกันไม่แน่ไม่แน่อันนี้ก็ต้องรอดูนะครับนี่คือนักชกจากสหรัฐอเมริกาเลยทีเดียวแล้วมาเจอกับคู่นี้ดีกว่าสําหรับคาเมาเนี่ยเขาต้องเจอคนนี้ครับผู้ที่จะขึ้นมาท้าชนด้วยเนี่ยเขาคือแชมป์อิสุสุครับซูเปอร์ไฟท์สองพันยี่สิบเอานิวอิสุสุดีแม็กซ์พลานุภาพพลิกโลกครับเจ้าของหมัดอันทรงพลังขอเสียงต้อนรับนะครับจอมน็อกเอาท์เมืองพิษณุโลกก้องกลายเอนิมวยไทยก้องกลายเอนิมวยไทยจอมน็อกเอาท์เมืองพิษณุโลกประเทศจะมีเหรอหรือที่แบบเดิมเหรอหรือที่แบบเดิมเหรอหรือที่แบบเดิมเหรอหรือที่แบบเดิมเหรอหรือที่แบบเดิมเหรอหรือที่แบบเดิม
Timothy Kamal, late replacement, stepped in on short notice. Well, he wasn't a late replacement. He was. We were struggling to find an opponent for Conkai. Mm. We actually got a bout sheet, didn't we, without the opponent for Conkai. He was fighting. It was. A, it was a, a late call. Mark. Fourth bout of the evening, Konklai Animoi Thai in the black corner from Thailand. And in the white corner from USA, Timothy Kamal. As ever, the removal of the Mong Kong final prayer. And we'll get the three round fight underway. <laughs> round one. 10 year age difference between these two fighters. Oh, the left high kicks there from uh, Kong Kai. Don't usually see that. He's all the guns are blazing with the hands. It yeah, usually he likes to throw those hands. I wonder if the, um, the corner have told him, hey, let's, let's show some other techniques as well. Nice Mom left high kick there nice from Kamal. Kamal's staying busy, I like that. I like his guard, I like how he's protecting his face. And he looks like he's in tremendous shape as well. Yep. Big strong legs there on the American fighter. Legs the size of the US economy. <laughs> They used to be bigger. <laughs> See again, another relatively slow start from Konkai. Well, he's not bleeding yet. <laughs> then we're going to raise him. Oh, so, oh, right kick to the body and down goes Kamal. Delayed reaction, but not a surprise from the sound that it made. I did mentioned that Konkai is ranked number seven in the world at 140. The top of that list, you're looking at Capitan. And, oh, and again, you're hearing the slaps from around the arena. Yeah, I mean, we're not close, and we can hear that yeah, it's right in our ears. Is 140. You've got Capitan and Sengmanese in there as well. Nung Lang Lek. It's a stacked division. The thing is, now that he's in Thai fight, we might not get to see those fights. I know a lot of Thai fans, uh, sorry, Muay Thai fans are disappointed about that, but we're happy. We've got I mean, no we'll issues at all to, with We'll Kong just have Kai. to bring Capitan and Sangmini to tie fight. <laughs> right? Yeah, Let's go. Wanna, wanna arrange that? Let's go. <laughs> that last left kick just pushed him over from force. He, he caught it with his hands, with his arms. Blocked oh, the kick. Oh, goodness. these kicks are unbelievable. Getting stronger, Konkai. Every time oh. Oh, another solid left down. Now that's all she wrote. The referee is taking pity, made the right decision. There's no more no shame reason in that. Yeah, for Kamal to take more damage. Another wow. destructive display there. I think he's confused. He's like, I'm ready to go. And I'm sure he could continue, but. Yeah, you get fr it's free knockdown rule, as the medic was saying, as you like to call him. You get knocked down three times, and that's all she rolled. Didn't even Conkai. scream for him. He came without my call. Super strong with those kicks. I yeah, well, I mean, one of them literally just caught. That was the first one that hit him in the body, and it was a bit of a delayed reaction, went down. But the second one, if they show it, yeah, I mean, look, he just caught it on his shoulder. Oh, that's still the first one. All right. But this one here, yeah, he just caught it on the shoulder. I guess we're not going to see it. <laughs> you want to say that? Just caught him on his shoulder again. I know for a fact. <laughs> He threw a high kick, caught him on the shoulder, and it just pushed him over. I think you they, caught, they called that a knockdown, though. That's the three knockdown rule you were talking about, Aaron. One of them, he just caught him right on the shoulder and just pushed him over. They called it a knockdown. They just love showing that first one. So, yeah, I think that's the one. Yeah, he just caught it. Pushed him shoulder, over. Though, after all that nonsense he just spoke. It was, he caught him with his arm. Either way, results still the same. Conkai does it again here at Tide Fight. Oh, 
โอ้โหต่อยกันได้ดุดันมดมันจริงๆคือนั่งอยู่ข้างล่างได้ยินเสียงหมัดได้ยินเสียงเตะโอ้โหจังมากโอ้ยิ่งแบบแบบจัดแบบปิดนะไม่มีคนดูนะเสียงนะแอกอักเปี้ยโอ้โหถ้าเป็นเรานะสุดๆเลยพี่แบงค์เอาลงบาไปแล้วแต่แน่นอนครับนี่คือความเท่นะฮะของนักเวทีของเรานะฮะครับได้สะใจมากๆฉะนั้นผลจะดูผมแล้วนะขอประกาศนะครับครับผู้ชนะของเรานะ The Winner s กองไฟเอเนมวยไทยจอนนักเอาแห่งเมืองพิษณุโลกต้องปรบมือให้กับนักมวยทั้งสองท่านนะฮะจริงๆนักมวยชาวอเมริกันนี้ก็ไม่ธรรมดาเหมือนกันนะครับขอเสียงต้อนรับเยียวพิฆาตจากลิสบอนฟาบิโอเรย์คูณที่หแล้วครับมาถึงครึ่งทางแล้วยังไม่มีนะครับที่นักมวยต่างชาติเนี่ยชนะน็อกนะครับครับผมแต่ครั้งนี้อาจจะเป็นคู่แรกก็ได้ใช่เลยครับเดี๋ยวต้องต้องมาดูกันแล้วว่าโปรดิเกตไม่ได้มีแต่คริสเตียโนโรนันโดนะครับมีฟาบิโอเรอิสด้วยอีกคนนึงเยี่ยวจากลิสบอนนะครับใช่แล้วครับและผู้ดีขึ้นมาประรองเชิงด้วยนั้นนะครับวันนี้เขาพร้อมแล้วที่จะมายัดเยียบความปราชัยให้นักมวยจากโปรดิเกตนะครับขอเสียงต้อนรับโหดขั้นเทพอีกคิวสร้างก่อรุ่งเรืองชนะกีประเทศไทย
fifth bout of the night. And maybe the best chance for the white corner to come away with a W. There is 23-year-old Fabio Hayes from Portugal, 174 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 71 kgs. His professional record, 45 fights, 32 wins, 13 losses. Two of those losses coming here at Thai Fight. Previously lost to Payak Samui, a fight both Aaron and I thought he won. And also lost to Sayo, which was a very close fight. Could have really gone either way. They definitely won one of those rounds. Now you can see Ikyuzang Korung Tanakiat. Originally from Surin province here in Thailand, 173 centimeters tall. Professional record of 202 fights, 175 victories, 22 losses, and five draws. An up and down career, should we say, here at Thai Fight. IQ Zhang, the crazy one. We have seen him, seen him lose here a couple of times, I believe. One time in France as well, where he got knocked down via a body shot. However, he He's has returned to Thai. Yeah, well, I was going to say last year he returned to Thai fight after a maybe a two or three year hiatus, and uh, he's been on fire ever since. Really, he's he's been back, and the man who tattooed Thai fight onto his person now has a, another shot of redemption, and he's took it with both hands. He's looked very that impressive. Came How before or after the comeback? Oh, it was before. Yeah, yeah, I remember. <laughs> When we first started commentating a Thai fight in 2015, Yuzhang was probably at his peak right then. So, you know, it's six years later. And uh, even though he did take that time away, he's been back and he's back with a vengeance. But he's fighting a hungry, young, up and coming fighter. Yeah, Fabio and, uh, Hayes, only 23 years old and really building a name for himself. Ranked in the WMO is Fabio Hayes at number 19. I've been really impressed with, with what we've seen from him so far at Thai Fight. I have. I think originally he was he did he fought a lot of K1. He's fought a lot of kickboxing in his career, but since his transition to Muay Thai, he's looked really apt. He's almost got a Dutch Dutch style. Likes to throw that low kick in combination with boxing. Yeah, he's got huge legs, really strong legs. I've got to say, I think right now, I know they they weigh in. The day before at Thai fight, usually in Muay Thai in the stadiums, they weigh in on the same day. I think Fabio Hayes right now will be a lot heavier than Ikuzang. Ikuzang can still make 70, let's not forget. So you think he puts on about 10, 5, 10 kgs in, in oh, a few oh, hours? I, don't, I, don't I know feel like that. I do that during <laughs> quarantine. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that, but <laughs> I'm pretty sure he will be heavier right now yeah, than He uh, will at Ikyuzang. least look the bigger man for sure. Here we go, round one. Ikuzang in the black. Fabio Hayes in the white. Nice outside leg kick there from Hayes. And look at those tree trunk legs, Aaron. Yeah, there's definitely a size discrepancy, isn't there, between these two? Good slappy right kick there from Ichu Zhang. Yeah, because they're about the same height, but they're, they're not built the same way. <laughs> definitely not. Hayes is built different. Nice one two combination there from Hayes. Outside kick there from the Portuguese fighter. Inside kick from Icky. Are you going to sing it for me? No. Icky, Icky, Icky. Maybe on the way home. <laughs> oh, swing and a miss there from Hayes as Icky Zhang moved forward. Yeah, he took advantage of that, landed a nice knee to the body. Oh, I like that body shot. Mike Tyson-esque. I got carried away, didn't I? <laughs> a little bit, that's okay. <laughs> right. I like the way Hayes is not taking a back foot. He's trying to push forward or at least stay in the center of the ring. Nice Good combination. combination there. Nicky Sang with the right hand. Oh! Going for that highlight reel. Still agile at 32. Yeah, I say, Icky, a little bit of a war veteran. He looks older than 32. Yeah, he's, he's, <laughs> wearing, he's wearing all those years for sure. Inside kick there from Icky Zhang. Outside kick from Hayes. Hayes again looking to go to the body. Maybe he's been watching old Thai fight clips and saw that Icky Zhang did get knocked down, or yeah, knocked out, should I say, with a body shot in France two years ago. In the body before. Definitely can be exploited. Good leg kick there from Icky Zhang. He's now training out of Sang Morokat gym. So a lot of the 
Uh, foreign fighters go to train in Thailand, and you can see a lot of those fighters on Thai fight. Shout out to Sang Morokot. Stiff left jab there from Ikuzang. Tries it again, but misses the mark. Hey, he's pushing Ikuzang back to the corner. Oh, both looking for that right hand. Yeah, the cleanest shot there might have been the left hook you to the body. You can see, Adam, Ikuzang is respecting that power. All those movements are going backwards now from the Thai fighter. He's just looking to counter wherever he can. Looking for that right hand. Oh, Ikuzang might have found it that time. Oh, looking for an elbow. Oh, playing into the, this is playing right into the hands of Ikuzang, you know. Left body shot there from Hayes and then a right hook. And again with that body shot. Ikuzang's guard gone down now, Adam. Oh. Just a slip, I think, but. Hayes is really putting in some strong work to the body of Ikwazang here in round one. With the quick pace. Mm, I like it. There's that nice right knee from Ikwazang. Perfect timing there from the Thai fighter. And not here's so uh, <laughs> not perfect timing. <laughs> Swing Airborne. and a miss. Here's some of the collisions in the pocket. Pace in Ikwazang's face. About as good as here. <laughs> here as yeah, well. those body shots have been really taking his toll. And when he went back to the corner, we saw his trainer say, eat more of those. More body shots. More body shots. That's what he wants from Hayes. What you don't want to do is what happened to Hayes in that first round. He got, when he got sucked into the brawl. Yeah, he did. Yeah. Now it's fun to watch. But that's, that's Ikuzang's style. That but that's what Ikuzang possesses is that one right hand slam. Yeah. Stay away from that. Keep attacking the body like you're doing. And yeah, Hayes, Hayes can break him down technically. Fight. He can easily win this fight. But if he gets into that brawl, we've seen it before. Ikuzang just lands a big strike. It's all but it takes, oh, especially with those roped hands. He is. My goodness. He really does look like a bigger fighter, doesn't he, Aaron? He does. Like I said, Ikuzan could easily make 70. Pace, I think, fights at about 72.5, so... A lot of a lot of things in the favor of Pace right now, including the fact that he had a really good first round. Good left kick there from Ikuzan. Oh, nice right hand from Pace. Again, though, Pace moving forward. Ikuzan on the back foot. Good right hand. The thing is, when you're moving on the back foot, it makes it very difficult to attack the body. And it makes it easier to counter. Good kicks here from Ikuzang. Pace knows that he's gonna. Oh, swinging left hook there, almost connects. Just glanced off the nose of the Thai fighter. Looking for a spinning back elbow. Unnecessary, really. Yeah, I agree. I think he can just keep this clean and technical. Look at the markings on the right side of Ikuzang's body from yeah. those left handed body shots. So he needs to really take aim and produce some more of those. Yeah, I thought that was his most effective strike in round one, that left uh, look, he's looking for it. seeking for it, if that left hook to the body. Yeah, if he's like knows it's coming. The block. Not a Weedman level block, but... Left hand there from Ikuzai. The body shot. And again, he's fighting really well off the back foot in this round. Ace has struggled to find anything, to be honest. There it is again. Oh, good left hook, though. That's made Ikuzai think. Oh, solid left kick there from Ace. If you can't punch the body, the next best alternative is the kick. And Hayes being consistent as well with those two three strike combinations. Oh, another right hand there from over the top. It's just really smart striking. Oh, Ikuzang throws, walked into that one. Throw three strikes, one of them at least. Probably going to connect. Oh, just glanced off the forehead there. Ikuzang trying to unload. Connect to the right. For that right hand. Looking for that elbow. Another left kick to that body. Yeah, almost that hurt that time, right up in the air. Yeah, you can see him. He's got his right arm down now, trying to protect his side. 
Not Hayes seen. knows it. He knows it. He's going, he's targeting it and going right after it. Another strong round from Hayes. Both fighters in the clinch. Most of those clinch situations. Ace was getting the better of it. Left kick, kick was angry. Again, forced to fight off the back foot, as you mentioned, Aaron. Almost the entire round. And while Hayes kind of started slow in that second round, he did pick it up towards the end. You can see a beautiful right hand. Yeah, and again, we went back to the corner. Hayes is coach to say the exact same thing. Target the body. Follow it up with combinations. But you've got to close that distance if you want to throw that body shot. He's saying it's worth the risk. Well, and you can see for much of that fight, even in that clip right there, nikwazang has got that right arm low. He's got that elbow tucked in, protecting that side because that's that where Hayes shot, has done most of his damage. Right there. Nice. <laughs> Slow-mo. Third and final round. I mean, I've got to score 2-0 for Hayes, but... The first round, I don't know. Second round, I would go Hayes. Oh! I would say the opposite. Seriously? Yeah. Hayes is going for it in his third round. Yeah, he does not look tired at all. He looks hungry. Pushing forward, super aggressive. Oh, look at oh. these combinations. Two three-strike combinations back to back. Make it into a brawl, why not? Hey, he's been here at tie fight two times. The first one against Payek Samui, like you said, he should have gone his way. The second round, against, the second fight against Sayo, he fought great in the first round. And then, and then he faded. Yeah, he faded. So why not go for it in this third round? Yeah, I mean, he might even feel like he needs a knockout to get a victory. I was just about to say, it won't help. It wouldn't hurt. It wouldn't hurt. <laughs> Caught him with that right hand there. Nikwazang's got all he can handle in this fight. Been on the back foot the whole fight. Oh, good. another shot to the that side of the body once again there from Hayes. He went to the body that time, but he got caught via an elbow from Ikuzang. Say so every time he he attempts to throw that shot to the body, like you said, Adam, the arm of Ikuzang is down. If he wanted to go to up to the top, yeah, if he threw a, a high left pathway. kick, it would be wide open. I don't know if that's a, a technique he possesses in his arsenal. You have to throw it off the front leg. Oh, and Ikwazang is just... He's exhausted. He's right exhausted. Now. His legs have been chewed up. His body's chewed up. His face is mangled. Oh, and again to the body. And that it's really been a, it's been a perfect timing. fight from Hayes. Overhand right there from Hayes. Good hands there from Hayes. Ikuzang looks a little bit out of it right now. Hayes looks like he could go another three rounds. Seriously? It's really surprising, Aaron, because as you mentioned in that Sayok fight, he faded. I mean, he, his conditioning didn't seem right. He had a really strong first round, and in rounds two and three, he just Plus gassed what, out. He was fighting Sayok as well, though, to be honest. And Sayok has come back to Thai fight looking extremely good. But I mean, this is a completely yeah, those, different fighter. Those body shots, again, taking its toll. Ikuzang's almost said, like, that'll do, that's enough. Yeah, like, you've won. Yeah. But I mean, to be fair, I think uh, Hayes, you know, probably feels hard done by on some of these decisions, so oh, I, he's yeah. going to pile it on. Yeah, we're not in the stadiums right now. Yeah, he's well, going to do are, whatever it takes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, oh sorry, right hand. What a combination. End of the third and final round. We're going to go to the judges. Hayes holds up his hands to say he's won the fight. He's trying to hold up Ikwazang's too. But Ikwazang's <laughs> like, I need to go sit down. Took a lot of abuse in that fight. Ikuzang. And if Hayes doesn't win this fight, I'm just going to go out and flat out say it. Hayes is not allowed to win fights anymore. <laughs> Forever. Because that was a, a clear cut dominant performance from the Portuguese fighter. Something that we're not that surprised about, Aaron. We thought he had it in him. But that was definitely the best fight I've ever seen from start to finish from the young Portuguese fighter.
beautiful technique there from Pace. It's all Haste, isn't it? The majority of the shots that are connecting and connecting with power. Well, you know, I are from the Portuguese fighter. You know, I thought he was up two rounds to zero, and honestly, that third round was his best round. Oh, exclamation mark. That was right at the end of that third and final round. I almost feel like the fist bump from Ikuzai was like, yeah, I've had enough. Stay away from me. โอ้โหเรียกได้ว่าลุ้นจริงๆนะคู่นี้สุดๆนะครับ <coughs> ครับ The winner is เยอะมีการจากลิซอน Fabio Reyes First time to charm congratulations to the winner Fabio Reyes from Portugal here at Thai Fight การเดินเร่งเพื่อนะเขาไม่หยุดเลยนะครับเหมือนไม่น่าจะเป็นประโยคหรือว่าน้ําเสียงแบบนี้หรอกโอ้โหดูความแข็งแกร่งเดินมาอย่างมีญาติ <coughs> เขาคือราชันจอมน็อกเอาท์ขอเสียงต้อนรับนะครับมังกรปากนะโปเต๋อ <coughs>
And then there were four. Sayok, Dengneng, PTT, Kitty, all left on the card tonight here at Thai Fight. Siam Boxing Stadium, DMHTT. How's that sound, Aaron? Sounds perfect. <laughs> there you can see in the white corner, Gligor Stojanov, Stojanov 31-year-old fighter from Switzerland, 178 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 72 kilograms. He has a professional record of 53 fights, 33 wins, 18 losses, and two draws. All four fights remaining are card chip. You can see the wrapped hands there. And there you can see Sayok from Pamuang. 37 year old now. 173 centimeters tall with a professional record of 321 fights, 270 victories with 49 losses and two draws. He is a former Rajadam Nern super lightweight champion in 2007 when he weighed 140 pounds just 12 years ago. Sorry, 14 years ago. Champion of Thailand at welterweight in 2008. Lumpini Stadium Super Welterweight Champion in 2010, and also a WMO Champion in 2015. He was also the Azuzu Cup Super Fight Champion of 2014, and also a 72.5 kilogram Thai Fight Champion in the same year. Sayok returned to Thai Fight last year. When we returned, I think it was September time, and uh, it was looks like he's in great shape. He's looked good. He still possesses the power. He does get hit a lot, though, unlike his former self. Not as fast, but still resilient, still tough, still got the power. Yeah, well, things change at this age, Aaron, let me tell you. <laughs> they used to call you Sayok as well, didn't they, once upon a time? It's like the opposite of being in the Matrix. I always thought of all the famous Muay Thai fighters that Sayok could really be the one they could make a movie about. Well, a fascinating career. Yeah, you, you want to explain to the viewers at home? Well, it's just it's just had a lot of dips and peaks and valleys and turns and twists and surprises and comebacks and you know you listed off a bunch of his uh, prestige as we have it listed on this sheet. He's an incredibly accomplished fighter, but he's he's gone through some hard times as well. He's hit rock bottom a few times and rebounded and come back. And I just think that there's, you know, that inherent drama in his career that, that movie makers look for. Legal has, of course, fought here at Thai Fight before in 2018. Of course. He fought Jana John. And he'll get another chance here tonight against another icon in the sport. Haven't seen Janajan in a while here at Thai Fight. I think he's moved on to his modeling career. <laughs> it was about time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Knocking folks. out photo shoots. Mm. Six. Fight of the evening from Thailand in the black corner. Sayo Pumpam Muang. And in the white corner, fighting out of Switzerland, Gligor Stojanov. So a few years ago, Sayo was fighting around 75 or 74 kilograms. Now he's all the way back down to 72. <laughs> Quite impressive, really. And it shows. You can see his body type now. Yeah, he moves well. Round one. If he carries on at this rate, he'll be fighting Conkly or something. The <laughs> <laughs> fight is taken to the center of the ring. Like an old school haircut there from Sayo. <laughs> nice left kick. Let's see if he's got a Moiboran haircut. Let's see if he throws any Moiboran moves. If you do, of course, defeat your opponent by knockout with a spinning back kick. 
A nice right hand there from Sayok. Just as I was about to say, watch his left side. Well, I was just about to say, you will win 100,000 bucks. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's way more exciting. <laughs> left kick to the body there from Sayok. Left kick to the legs. Swinging hands there from Sayok and even an elbow for good measure. Another left hand there from Sayo. So a lot of power comes off the left side. Sayo. We go looking for that left hook. Just catching Sayo. Is that a grapefruit tattooed on his back? Oh, nice uppercut there from Sayo. Oh, left. Oh, beautiful left hand. And again. We go in trouble. Oh, look at those elbows, though. Oh, good knee there from Sayo. Now rolling back the ears with that speed. He really punished him with that combination. Left hands and left kicks. The baseball bat, right hand there from Hugo. Body shots from Sayo. Deep breath there from Hugo. Really fast start here from Sayo in round one. Body shot. Okay, from the Switzerland fighter. Sayo taking it into the body of Ligo looking up top. Nice right hand there from Ligo. Got through the guard. So hard to keep an active guard with roped hands. Oh. So the left kick there from Sayo. And again. Oh, and again. Next one's yours. Oh, oh my goodness. Big, deep breaths from Gligor. That's what you get in an empty stadium, right? It just echoes and reverberates around here. Oh, Gligor is tough. He is tough. Yeah, he's taking a pounding, and he's still found moments to move forward in this fight. Great, entertaining opening round here at Tie Fight. Deep. Sayok going after the body of oh, Gligo. Gligo toughing it out. He's able to find shots to the head of the veteran Sayok. Okay. You don't usually I say what was the shot of a round, but that left kick. Yeah, I wish these highlights impressive. came with sound effects. You say the tattoo on the back was a half cut lemon. I thought it was a. I thought it was a grapefruit. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I don't think it's a grapefruit anymore. Really interesting forex-like exchanges there between the two fighters. I thought you were going to say something crypto-related <laughs> instead. <laughs> so round one for Sayo? I, I guess so, yeah. I'll say I guess so. I know so. But still, uh, a lot of toughness shown from Gligor. Had a couple of nice counters. Yeah, see if he can those, build on that hey, round with two. With those rope hands, we know anything can happen. Yeah, some down of the low. power of that back grapefruit. There's a marking on the right side of Gligor's body. Those are from those beautiful left kicks that Sayok landed in round one. Oh, that looks. Is he stunned? Wow, I thought that was a slip, but no, I he looks thought, knocked down. I thought it was a collision of bodies. I didn't realize that Sayok hit, hit him with anything. I mean, he was wobbly getting back up to his feet. Definitely counted as a knockdown. I can't believe Sayok's not moving in there. Oh, okay. He moved in. He listened to you. Is that a head kick? Oh, and again going up high. Gligor looks like he's in a yeah, world he's, of trouble. Yeah. He's got his eyes closed, just holding on for dear life. Sayok pumps up the pressure here. Gligor saying, come on. He is tough. Racing for impact. Oh, another, oh, another high kick. 
Okay. Strange. Pulling out his best rock time impersonation. Oh! oh. He walked straight into that one. Crunching right hand. Still want to see that replay of how he got knocked out. He's bleeding now. Yeah. Battered and bruised. I mean, but not Sayak, beaten yet. Sayak threw that overhand right with true malice, and he walked into it. But he took it again. I'm not sure Gligor knows quite where he is right now. They're going to take a look at this cut. And to be honest, neither do I. <laughs> take a look where at the I? wall in front of you, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not ringside, ladies and gentlemen. For, uh, DMHTT, distance, masks, walls. <laughs> So, the fight goes on, but for how long? Blood streaming down the face oh. of Gligor. Another right hand caught from Sayo. Continues like to move forward. Tears of blood rolling down the face of Gligor. Trying to protect the guy. Oh, another swing to miss. Sayo moving in quick. Ref's got his eyes on Gligor. If he keeps wrapping up Sayok like this, he might survive the round. That's pretty much what he needs. What's he saying, he can't see? Yeah, yeah that's a little bit disturbing when he doesn't know. If, him, if he's stopping that fight and saying that he wants to see the doctor... Yeah, then that's got to be it. You can't really call for a timeout during a fight. Good decision. That. I think he's taken more than enough damage, Aaron. Sayok looked really, really there's, there's sharp in this fight. Right over the top right of Right over the, the eye. eye. It's it bleeding like, right into yeah, his eye. Exactly. I wasn't sure if there was a cut just under the eye as well or close to the eye. But anyway, RSC... Referee, sorry, yeah, referee stops the contest. Just a really, really impressive performance once again from Sayok, who we mentioned is rejuvenated. Oh, it was a right hand. I, again, I didn't see that. Oof. Oh, show the replay of the knockdown again, please. Best. Oh, right there. Caught him on the chin. Yeah, the wall must have gotten in the way, and I didn't see it. It was sneaky. Yeah, it was sneaky how he caught him with that short right. Just ducked under and caught him on the chin. There was that beautiful high left kick. Well, he asked for it and he received. You're oh. doing the stats though for Gligor. 10 out of 10 for chin. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Incredible toughness. There's that right hand right to the eye. He walked into that. Basically sliced him open and he just carried on like nothing hit him. But the roll continues. Sayok from Pambawan, your winner. Here at Thai Fight DMHTT. มันสะใจไปอีกนึงครับเกิดต่อให้เป็นยกเดียวเป็นยกเดียวที่มันสุดๆนะฮะเห็นมั้ยนี่คือตำนานมวยศอกที่ยังมีชีวิตอย่างที
งไงล่ะครับคุณไม่น่าเชื่อไม่ต้องกระโดดนะครับไม่ต้องกระโดดเลยแค่ก้าวข้ามผ่านเฉยๆเลยนะครับสูงจะได้เสียวนี่เหมือนแบบสูงพอๆกับต้นกล้วยแต่คราวนี้ต้นกล้วยจะมาซ้อมหรือเปล่าหรือจะซ้อมต้นกล้วยนั่นแหะสิแต่เป็นต้นกล้วยที่หนานะโอ้โหหนาแน่นเลยทีเดียวนะฮะใช่เลยครับผมว่าน่ากลัวเลยทีเดียวนะฮะสำหรับนักชกคนนี้เพราะฉะนั้นนะครับผู้ที่ได้ขึ้นมาประทะด้วยนั้นนะครับนี่เป็นหนึ่งในแชมป์อีซูซูครับซูเปอร์ไฟท์ออลนิวอีซูซูดีแม็กซ์พลานุภาพพลิกโลกเขาคือราชันจอมน็อกเอาครับขอเสียงต้อนรับมังกรปากน้ำโพดเตียงหนึ่งสิเจสายรุ่งเต้งหนึ่งสิเจสายรุ้งมังกรปากน้ำโพดประเทศไทยเพราะฉะนั้นก็อาจจะมีการเปิดประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่าเป็นประตูทายฟายที่ผมจำได้ว่า Probably his claim to fame was losing to Max Holloway in the UFC. Was it 2014? Around, yeah, 2014 in Singapore. Has an extensive background in mixed martial arts and now will be practicing Muay Thai in here with that man. Yeah, his professional MMA record actually stands at 38 wins with 17 losses. So he's been around. And there you can see his opponent, Peng Nung Sit Jai Sarong. 28-year-old from Nakhon Sawan Province in Thailand, 180 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 102 fights, with 84 victories, 14 losses, and four draws. Former Isuzu Cup Super Fight Champion of 2015, Thai Fight Champion of 2015, Thai Fight Champion of 2019 as well. Currently ranked number one by the WMO at light heavyweight, which is around 175 pounds. So that's around 80 kilograms. So actually, Teng Lung is getting lighter. <laughs> While we're talking about <laughs> that's weight, that's all that training at Fairtex. Shout out to Fairtex in Pattaya, where Teng Lung has actually been training and they've been putting him through some stuff because he looks in tremendous shape. So while we're talking about weight, was was Will Chope much smaller back then when he yeah, fought he, Max he was, Holloway? I remember when he first, well, he, he came to the UFC for one fight, of course, but he was. He used to, he fought at 145. Okay, because I was going to say, like, I'm just imagining in my head yeah. Max Holloway and Feng Neng yeah, fighting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, yeah, everyone Seems was saying crazy. the same thing. He's a dangerous opponent for anyone because of his height. Well, Feng Neng is a dangerous fighter for anyone because of that power he possesses in his left hand. Here's an interesting one for you. Will Chope was actually scheduled to fight at Fight Circus. Shout out to John Nutt. <laughs> yeah, he was supposed to take on Bank and No Money in a two versus one fight. And okay, would you rather <laughs> fight 
Feng Neng in a 1v1, <laughs> or would you rather fight against two men? I'd rather fight four versus one instead of fighting so. Feng I think so, too. <laughs> All right, folks, seven fight of the evening. And again, and Ka Chuk. Tang Neng Sit Jai Sarong from Thailand in the black corner. And in the white corner from the United States of America, Will the Kill Chope. Round one. <laughs> wow, you see how tall he is. Yeah, 192 centimeters is maybe the tallest fighter we've seen here at Thai Fight. He actually trains in Hua Hin. He's been around Asia a long time now as well. Lived in Thailand, I think he's lived in other places as well around Asia. Oh, there's oh, that left, left hand. hand. Lifted Chope right off his feet. Oh, a low kick. Low kicks are hurting him. There's that left hand again oh. and again. This could be the beginning of the end already. Takes a knee. trying to decide if he wants any more of that. Usually when fighters get that first taste of the left hand from from Teng Neng, their lives goals sort of rearrange. <laughs> oh, oh so the body. And down goes Chope once again. I'm not sure he's gonna get up this time. Yeah, he's, he's shaking his head, he doesn't want any more of that. Now don't blame him. Teng Neng the destroyer. Short but sweet. Tang Nung does it again here at Thai Fight. DMHTT at Omnoy Stadium at Siam Boxing Stadium. In Samutsa Khan. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the highlights. Low kick from Tang Nung, and that violent, that vicious, that left hand bomb that he possesses. Picking his shots. Finding the target. Will didn't really have time to throw anything in that exchange. That was the initial one where he fell to his knee. Will was trying to hold on, trying to stop Teng Neng from doing anything, but couldn't. Ah, Teng Neng there was like a left hand into an elbow shot. that low kick. Sportsmanship. Tang Neng does it again. Here at Thai Fight. Oh ho, I'm so mighty serious to die, the hat knock up in the dash and I'll rout up for a card for the gun had the winner is Tang Neng Sit. ใจที่ครับแต่ละมัดแต่ละแข้งนี่ต้องบอกว่าหนักมากจริงๆครับแบบที่ผมบอกมาตำนานแห่งการน้องเขาไม่ว่าจะมัดหนักแล้วยังต
แต่นี่คือนอกจากเสื้อคลุมตัวนอกนี่เขาใส่เสื้อตัวข้างในอีกตัวเหรอเพ็กอ่าไม่ใช่คำนั้นรอยสักของเขาครับเป็นเสื้อใช่ไหมฮะครับผมไม่งั้นถอดให้ดูหน่อยครับเดี๋ยวอย่าเพิ่งอย่าเพิ่งไปทักเขาตรงนั้นให้เขาทําสมาธิไปก่อนโอเคครับเพราะดูหน่วยการแล้วคนนี้เนี่ยผมบอกเลยว่าน่ากลัวมากๆสำหรับนักชกไทยของเราแน่นอนสิครับอ่ะไม่งั้นโอ้โหไปนอนทับหนังสือพิมพ์มาเรื่องไงล่ะพ่อคุณอยากเองนะคุณพูดเองนะผมไม่เกี่ยวนะไม่จะไปแปลเขาฟังสิเราก็รู้กันเท่านี้ก่อนแต่ว่าเป็นรอยสักที่ขู่ขวัญและถูกต้องแต่ผมเชื่อว่านักชกไทยไม่มีทางกลัวแน่นอนนะครับและผู้ใดขึ้นมาประลองเชิงด้วยนั้นเป็นหนึ่งในแชมป์อีสุสุครับโอนิวอีสุสุดีแมสพลานุภาพพลิกโลกครับผมไฟที่แล้วเนี่ยเขาเพิ่งเสียสถิติกันน็อกคู่ต่อสู้12ไฟติดต่อกันแต่ก็เป็นเขาก็ชนะนะโอ้โหตำนานแล้วใช่ตำนานเพราะฉะนั้นเดี๋ยววันนี้จะมาดูว่าเขาจะสามารถสารต่อการชนะน็อกต่อไปได้หรือเปล่าอ่ะเดี๋ยวมาดูกันครับไปพบกันเลยนะครับกับฉลามร้ายให้เมืองชนปอตทวรุจิรวงวงวงวงวงวอรุจิระบงฉลามร้ายแห่งเมืองชนประเทศไทยเซรีสอิงค์ถ้าเขาจะรบกับไข่เขาเขาจะเป็นไข่ที่สวยที่สุดในโลกนี้ไข่ที่สวยที่สุดในโลกนี้ไข่ที่สวยที่สุดในโลกนี้ไข่ที่สวยที่สุดในโลกนี้ William Whipple, 31-year-old fighter from the United States of America, our third American fighter on the card this evening for our penultimate fight. Fighting out of Washington, 175 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 69 kilograms. Whipple has a professional record of 62 fights, 45 wins, 15 losses, and two draws. Definitely a fighter that's been around Thailand for a long time. Yeah, fought on Max. Many many times. It was a max stalwart, to be honest. And fights out of uh, Sitmon Chai Gym up in Kanchanaburi. Shout out to those guys. And there, uh, his uh, his opponent, PTT fought Rujiro Wong, 23 years of age, from Chonburi Province in Thailand, 178 centimeters tall, with a professional record of 153 fights, 123 victories, with 29 losses, and one draw. He was the 20, 26th Azuzu Cup champion. He then moved on to Thai fight, defeated Payak Samui to become the Super Fight champion. He's also the Thai fight champion in 2016, 2017, and 2019. Eight fight of the evening, Ka Chuk from Thailand. PTT fought Rujiro Wong in the black corner. And in the white corner, William Whipple. From the United States of America. Never said that so many times in one night. <laughs> PTT trying to get that anime vibe going on. 
Is it that, or is he trying to look like Doc from Back to the Future? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to guess anime. Oh, okay. You alluded to it, Adam. William Whipple has been around a long time here in <gasps> Thailand. You were checking out and that back actually, tattoo. Yeah, he's actually, he actually bought it at BK as well. So Our old stomping grounds. Yeah. Low kick there from PTT. He's going to come in with that sit on chai style, low kicks, aggression, lots of hands. Let's see if he can max many a time, but Let's see if he can weather the storm. PTT is a fast yeah, this starter. This might be his first time with Pacha as well. Low kicks early there from PTT. I know he's been training with uh, Ging Sanglek recently. Ging Sanglek is actually the Omnoi Stadium champion at 135. Oh, that's a technique we haven't seen from PTT. And maybe Probably a can. reason for that. <laughs> if wasn't exactly out, uh, if Walker, you, Texas yeah. Ranger on that, was he? <laughs> if you can knock your opponent out with that technique, but done more proficiently, yeah. you will win 100,000 bar. <laughs> Right hand there from PTT and then another a nice knee yeah, to the body. Right knee to the body. Whipple felt that one. Oh, and again. Would you say it whippled throughout his body? You could. You stuck me with that. <laughs> Good knees again from PTT. Whipple covering up. Oh, another right knee. That right the knee is really too. deadly. It's a new PTT though. He used to be such a reckless fighter. Oh, and he's much more measured now. Still aggressive. I wish his barber was measured. One kick from PTT. Overhand right attempt from Whipple. But nothing really getting through. And again, PTT looking for that knee. Oh, there's a massive cut on the oh, top yeah, of the head. Oh, yeah, he just there, opened it up with that and elbow, right and, and Whipple goes, goes down. down. But it really started with that right elbow to the top of the head. Just split, whipple, open. Oh, and the blood is just squirting out of his head. I'm, I'm surprised the referee didn't let the doctor have a look at that. Maybe he thinks it's going to be oh, over in about again. a moment. And that's it. It's over in a moment. Yeah, I mean, really, it was. we're going to probably see that's, it here on replay. But that right elbow just split him open. and That's as precise and as calculating as we've ever seen from PTT. Well, like I said, he's really turned over a new leaf, you know, whether it's the hair or his age. <laughs> well, the but, you know, he, he used to be so reckless, yeah. and he got caught a couple of times. We he talked did. about, we used to talk about on the air all the time about how if he wants a long career, he's going to have to learn how to fight differently because even though he had all those amazing finishes, he was getting beat up. Yeah, and, and also he now trains out of Venom Muay Thai, so shout out to those guys. Well, they've really changed what kind of fighter he is because he's still getting the finishes, but he's doing it without putting himself in danger. Yeah, he's avoiding the damage, unnecessary damage. Oh. Wow, look at that right elbow that caused the initial cut. Those right knees to the body. I feel like those knees shut down Whipple. From yeah, the very they really did. And he was, he was, you know, he was in trouble for a lot of that opening round. There again with that right knee. Is it me or is PTT he's getting taller as well? I feel like he's growing. I think Whipple's just eyes. shorter. <laughs> but yeah, fantastic performance from PTT. Yeah, calm, Pretty cool, and perfect. calculated. Perfect. Oh. Destruction of Whipple. Oh yeah, I mean that's bad. That's like George Romero level blood and gore. But more of an assassin style. Congratulations to PTT Varu Jirawang. Another win. Congratulations <laughs> <to> <laughs> 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 สลับร้ายแห่งเมืองชนปตทวรุจิรวงยินดีด้วยนะครับผมแม่แต่ท่านน็อกด้วยท่าจะแค่ปัญหานี้ได้อีกแสนเลยนะใช่แต่นี่เ
ู้ชมคุณวิลเลียมยังไม่ธรรมดานะได้ผมเพิ่งเห็นรอยสักเขาลายไทยเลยนะคุณโอ้โหเป็นไงฮะไม่ธรรมดาแต่ละบอกปตทหนักจริงไม่ธรรมดาเหมือนกันไม่ธรรมดาขอเสียงต้อนรับนะเดลลิพาร์ครับเรซ่าอัมมาเนสโซทรงดีมีความมั่นใจนะครับคนนี้ครับผมยอดมวยจากเอรานมาแล้วก็คู่สุดท้ายคือบอกเลยถ้ามาคู่สุดท้ายก็ต้องไม่ธรรมดานะพี่เป๊กแน่นอนหลายๆคนรอคนคนนี้อยู่นี่ก็เป็นฮีโร่ออฟไทยไฟอีกหนึ่งคนครับครับผมอ่ะทีนี้เรามาเจอกับนักมวยไทยคนสุดท้ายในวันนี้ดีกว่าครับผมผู้ดีขึ้นมาต่อกองด้วยนั้นนะครับเขากำลังจะเป็นตำนานบทใหม่แห่งมวยศอกบอกเลยว่ามวยศอกของไทยน่ากลัวมากใช่ครับนี่น็อกมาแล้วหลายยกหลายคู่ก็พอศอกนี่แหละนี่นี่คือโอ้โหความรับนะฮะเป็นดาวดวงใหม่ของวงการศอกนะใช่เลยครับไปพบกันเลยดีกว่านะครับขุนศอกทะลงฟันกิตติโสจอดเดนระยะแดนระยองขุนศอกทะลวงฝันประเทศไทยIs this the first time ever at Thai fight that we've called, where Sanchai isn't the final fight? Because it feels pretty weird. Yeah, I believe it is. Just missing the dance. There was one. The music. Fight, there was one fight night that we had in Bangkok when we first joined Thai fight, which was like a mini Thai fight. I'm not sure if Sanchai was on that card or, or not. I'd have to go back and look. But yeah, get well soon, goat. Yeah, get well soon. Here you can see in the white corner for the final fight this evening, 22-year-old Reza Ahmad Nazad, the leopard, fighting out of Iran, 180 centimeters tall. This fight taking place at 73 kilograms. 
His professional record, 42 fights, 32 wins, 9 losses, and 1 draw. And there is his main event opponent, Kitty Sawjaw Dan Rayong. 182 centimeters tall, 92 victories. Sorry, 92 fights with 81 victories, 11 losses, and zero draws. He is the 2019 Thai Fight Card Check Champion at 70 kilograms. Starting to move up in weight now. It's amazing to think that he's now heavier than Sayok. Yeah, he's growing <laughs> into his frame for sure. I have to say. And who knows how much bigger he's going to get? Only 21 years old. Just going back to his entrance, something very sinister about someone who slow dances to EDM music. <laughs> <laughs> and also, on that note... Very scary. You watch one championship, right? And sure. you see everyone dancing out. I feel like Kitty might have the best move. Compared it, to all of the one championship fighters. Yeah. At least it's it got some sort of rhythm. <laughs> <laughs> this boy can do it all. Well, as Aaron and I have mentioned multiple times tonight, Sanchai out with COVID. So the... Final main event fight of the night goes to Kitty. Can he carry the crown? He'll have to for at least one event. Yeah, out of all the fighters they could have put on as the main event, they obviously have chosen Kitty. You see something in him, and I understand it. He is a superstar. Relatively new to Thai fight, of course. He's only been here a couple of years, but what an impact he's made. Final fight here. Uh, this evening's Thai fight, DMHTT, in the black corner from Thailand, Kitty Sojo Dan Rayong. And in the white corner from Iran, Reza Ahmad Nazad. Yeah, we talked about how PTT used to be an incredibly fast starter, finishing fights in like less than a minute. That reckless, super aggressive mantle has been passed to Kitty who is now definitely the most aggressive fighter in the Thai fight stable. Yeah, so don't blink, already. don't go to the bathroom, don't blink. really shooting in those right kicks. <laughs> Kitty almost went flying out of the ring looking for that right elbow. Kitty looking versus to take Leopard. Razor's head right off his shoulders with that. But yeah, you know, Kitty moving up three kilograms, he's gonna start to feel what it's like to fight bigger fighters. Well, and we've seen him get hit. Strength. We've seen him get hit too. You know, I, I, I don't think that we're that far away from him going through a PTT transformation, where he starts to realize that he can't take this amount of punishment and get away with it. Especially like you said, Aaron, as he goes up in weight and starts fighting guys that have more power to throw around. It looks like there's a cut on the head. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was a an accidental hits. collision. It happened so quick. Reza was also gesturing to, you know, don't hit the back of my head. Yeah, Kitty, sorry, PTT, we were talking about. Started Thai fight around 70, sorry, 67 kilograms, and then as he started to fight 70 kilogram fighters, that's where the issues lie. Especially when you fight, when you're waiting on the day before, fight bigger fighters. That's what Kitty's doing right now. He's moving up in weight, three kilograms. He's fighting fighters not only who can throw and kick harder, but who can take a dig as well. Yeah, they're just naturally bigger humans. That was my scientific <laughs> breakdown. <laughs> looking for those sneaky elbows. That's been one of Kitty's favorite techniques, is that downward swiping right elbow. I haven't seen it yet in this fight. His right hand there from Reza. <laughs> Here comes Kitty. <laughs> Reza's pushing the pace here. Kitty's backed up into a corner. Switching stances again as well. Beautiful out on the back. I think it's finally finished. Yeah. We've seen it in all stages. For those elbows. Left and right's coming in. Reza trapped in the corner. Good right hook to the body. I think he did well to get out of that without too much damage done. Nice left jab there. 
Kitty. Oh, back into the other corner. This is not where you want to be. You don't want to be back to another corner with a Kitty. Might not sound that threatening, but it is. <laughs> End of round one. elbow that Kitty likes to throw so much. He didn't quite get it off cleanly there in the corner. And there's one got through. It's weird to show these highlights and say that, that Reza actually had a pretty decent round. I think the majority of the, the good strikes that we saw from Reza and Kitty alike, to be honest, were the kicks to the body right at the beginning of the, uh, the first round. I think what impressed me the most about Reza was just that Kitty seemed a bit reluctant to launch himself in there, which I don't, I'm not sure if I've seen before. And I, oh. I imagine that that's a sign of, of respect, maybe, for a bigger fighter. Wait for the bell. <laughs> hey. It's not every event we get to see Kitty in a second round. There's a nice knee yeah, from good Reza. Good technique. Reza training out of K1 gym, I believe because Kai Van's in his corner. A lot of good Iranian fighters at that gym. We've seen a few of them. Yeah, always a lot, isn't there? A good presence of Iranians on Thai fight. Pretty <laughs> desperate to go in with those elbows, isn't he? Good covering up there from Reza. And a nice right hand. Solid knees there. Oh, that caught him. It's a really nice technique there. The and again, switch knee. He's found a home for that left knee, Adam, for sure. You know what? I'm pretty sure Reza was scheduled to fight at Lumpini in a couple of weeks. Oh, maybe next week. But they've just found out now that we're going into a mini lockdown. So for the next two weeks, Muay Thai gyms have to close. So he's and like, let's go, let's do it today. Yeah, and the boxing stadiums have to close as well. And, oh! Look at that leg caught the neck of Kitty before he went down. Well, I think the opportunity to tie, fight a tie fight occurs to take it anyway, right? I'm sure the purse is bigger. How lucrative. Kitty chasing Razor around the ring. Not catching him with great shots, but doing enough damage. Oh. Razor seems like he's got slippery feet. Oh, oh that one is that's oh, perfect timing. Oh my goodness. Left knee. We said that was hurting him oh. in the first round. There was an opening. Oh, he he's took done. it. And that's all she wrote. Just an absolutely gut wrenching knee to the body that had Reza doubled over like a broken piece of origami. And if you think that that's bad, someone's just come in the ring and put a cloth over his nose. <laughs> now he can't breathe. Yeah. <laughs> that was a great effort, though, from Reza for the first two rounds. It was, I wouldn't say it was causing Kitty problems, but it was frustrating Kitty. Kitty was unable to do him what Kitty to think usually about, does. For sure. And Kitty came up with something that we haven't really seen for him in those stabbing spear left knees. He worked them over and over to the body of Reza, and eventually, the straw that broke the camel's back, and this time the Iranian's back. Right there, bang. And unable to breathe, Reza goes down, and Kitty is the winner here at Thai Fight DMHTT, or should I call it DMHKITTI? Yeah, I mean, that's whatever that was is great. Yes, I put Kitty in there. Okay. <laughs> Well, if you didn't know who Kitty was before, oh, 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 replacing the goal as the main event. ผมก็ตกแต่จบด้วยคนเดียวโอ้โหเดินหน้าสู้กันอย่างมันสะใจนะไม่รู้สึกว่าเออสมมติคนสุดท้ายผมบอกเลยว่าเป็นไงพี่
your winner here in this main event a tie fight EMHGT from Thailand Kitty Sojo Dan Rayong all right boys and girls like I said there is a mini lockdown from tomorrow here in Bangkok I don't know when the next Thai fight will occur hopefully we won't see you in the two distant future. I've been Aaron Siri Sompan. I'm Adam Martin. Thank you. We'll see you again, hopefully soon, here at Thai Five.